a copyrighted program transcribed and dedicated to the prevention of crime. Calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 225. Be on the lookout for a blonde woman wearing a mink coat, diamond bracelet, and other jewelry suspected of burglary. That is all. Gordon. Compared with the number of male criminals, the number of women criminals is low. But the women malefactors are increasing, unfortunately, at a rapid pace. Most of the independent crimes committed by women are done in moments of passion. But in the instance where women voluntarily enter into a life of continued crime, there the man has pointed the way. And just like the man's criminal life, the woman's is horrible and brief, for the law makes no distinction between the sexes. Law enforcement agencies are just as earnest in ridding society of one as they are the other. Listen then to the true story adapted from the records of law enforcement authorities entitled The Peroxide Blonde. In the home of Deputy Sheriff Cosno Kirsch on the night of October 24th, 1936, one stoop. Keep your shirt on. You found nothing yet? Sure, an overcoat, a bathrobe, and a bunch of neckties. I know to get a lot of jack. Hey, wait a minute. What's up? Here's a couple of rods. Let me see. See a 38 S and W and a 32. Lamel. It's a pair of handcuffs. See, this bird must be a copper. So what? His junk will bring as much as anybody else's. Want to take him along? Why not? Junk man will buy him. If he don't, we can uh, sell him to the cop on the corner. Fair chance. Here, take this 38. Mm. Sweet baby, ain't it? Be careful with that thing. You might shoot yourself. Come on, let's blow. Take your time. There's a lot of junk here. Get that. It's getting late. we got to beat it. Okay, give me a hand with this stuff. We'll go out the back. Hey, I bet this copper's going to be sore when he finds out about this. In a swanky bungalow in the Ambassador Hotel grounds on the night of October 30th, I beg your pardon. You see, I, I just moved out of this bungalow, and I didn't know it was occupied yet. I, uh, I left something in the medicine cabinet, in the bathroom, uh, my ring. I uh, wonder if you'd mind if I look for it. Why, well, I suppose not. As a matter of fact, I just came in, and I haven't had time to look in the cabinet. Yeah, I know. I, I, I mean, uh, I'll go with her if you don't mind. No, not at all. I, that is, hey. it, my word, what extraordinary persons. Blonde in a mink coat, a brunette in an ermine wrap. My word. Oh, uh, say, thanks a lot. Uh, the ring wasn't there. I must have left it somewhere else. In the cocktail lounge, I'm sure. Or a beer parlor. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, uh, well, we we got to be going. Oh, really? Yeah, really. 
I say, you will pardon my robe, won't you? I, I was dressing. Um, may I offer you a drop of sherry? Well, yeah, you may. If we don't get out of here, huh? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, say, uh, we got a scram. Scram? My word, what strange language. How odd, huh? Dash it all, where are my trousers? Oh, yes, yes, I remember they're in the bathroom. The bathroom? I wonder. Oh, my word. My wallet. It's gone. On the morning of November 10th, Inspector Stensland of the Sheriff's Bureau of Investigation receives a visitor. I'm Inspector Stensland. What can I do for you? I want action. I'm tired of this happening to me every time I leave my home to go to a theater. I'm a citizen and a taxpayer. And I want something done. I want it done today. Not next month or next week, but now. I'll see my lawyer. Yes, yes, yes. But what's the trouble? I've been robbed. Well, when, where, and how? Last night at my home. How? Oh, well, how should I know? Well, let's try it again. Now, who are you? I'm Dr. Chester, and yeah, I... Yeah, you've been robbed, I know. Now, give me a list of the stuff, hmm? Very well. A full-length ermine cape. A three-quarter length ermine cape with rhinestone clip. A silver fox cape, a silver fox muff. A set of sable fur. Yeah, uh, uh, I thought you were a doctor. I am. You sound like a furrier. Now, what else? A short ermine jacket, a silver fox neck piece, a silver fox collar. Yorks. What? Uh, nothing, nothing. Go ahead. A diamond and sapphire bracelet set in platinum, a smaller diamond and sapphire bracelet, a platinum watch chain, a platinum and gold cigarette case. Jeweler now, huh? What is that? I said nice jewelry. <laughs> Go ahead, Doctor. Uh, and, and a pair of cufflinks. Yes, Doctor. I think that's all. Are you sure? Well, certainly I'm sure. Isn't that enough? Oh, quite enough, Doctor. I'll send an officer out to talk to you and get a complete description. Very well, I'll be there. Uh, what's the value of the property, Doctor? Between fourteen and $15,000. Okay, we'll get on it right away. Another one of them. Uh, Thomas. Yes, Inspector? Here. Here's a list of the robberies that have been reported in here since the 1st of October. Now, get on them. Got enough of them. Now, those jobs all look alike to me. The folders are all there on every job. You'll find most of them are as alike as to, well, method of operation. And... Where are they located? All over. Hmm. These babies look like smooth birds to me. Old heads of the game, probably. Now, I want you to run that bunch up. I don't care how long it takes, who you have to use, or how you do it. But get that gang of housebreakers. Think there's two women, the ones who pulled that ambassador hotel job, are in this mob? Well, for the purpose of your work, assume that they are. Well, if the cinch of these babies have been operating as long as these reports indicate, they're pretty apt to be known around the joints. Guess I'll put the old grapevine to work. Thomas speaking. This is Joe. Uh-huh. Oh, the thing looks like a new mob, Tommy. Yeah? Yeah, it's two guys. One's named Haynes, the other's called Healy. They drive a jalopy with red wire wheels. Here's the license number. Shoot. 6S8640. They live on Fremont, close to 3rd. Any women? Yeah, two. A beefy blonde and a dark dame about 18 and 19. How about the blonde? Old enough to be sitting Bull's mother. Okay. Keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. Don't worry about me, Tommy. Anything to help a pal. Thanks. So long. Yes, sir? Will you get hold of Ed Crumpler at the Associated Bureau of Identification? Right away, sir. I'll call you. <laughs> Come on in, Ed. Sit down. Yeah, I came down as soon as I got your message. What's up? Got to clean up a burglar gang. Oh, just like that, huh? Yep, Stensland's orders. Who are they? Search me. All I know is that there are at least two men and a couple of women, and they drive a Ford sedan with red wire wheels. Any idea where they live? Somewhere around Fremont, near third. Could be easy to find out where they can live around that neighborhood. I have an idea that it's in that hotel in the corner or one of those apartment houses in that district. Anyway, I've got the license number of the car. And that's all we need to know. What's the plan? Well, all the boys in this department are well known. That's why I've called you in. Hmm. You're not known as a dick, and maybe we can get a line on these boys, get in with them, and get enough dope on them to knock them over. Okay, I'll get on it at once. Two of Crumpler's operatives watching from another car, Thomas and Crumpler parked across the street from the hotel to watch for the suspected driver of the red-wheeled Ford. Next morning, Thomas reports to Inspector Stensland. 
We parked over there about an hour before anybody showed up at the car, and then a couple of monkeys came out and drove off in the sedan. Where'd they go? To a cocktail joint on West 7th. You go in? Sure. We went in, got a good look at them. Mm. Anybody you know? Never saw them before. Ed Grumpler didn't know them either. Were there any women? Yeah, a couple. One of them's a blonde, about uh, 38 years old. The other one's just a youngster, 18 or 19. Very dark. Sounds like the description of the two women in that ambassador hotel job. One of the boys over at the cop house knows the dark girl. Says her name's Dorothy. Picked her up once for questioning. Any record? Nothing we could use. Well, what are your plans? Well, Ed and I are keeping a couple of boys on watch all the time, and when we relieve them, we're going to try and make a contact with those two birds that we saw last night. And what's going to keep these fellows from recognizing your car if you keep following them around? <laughs> well, we thought of that. We fixed the headlights so we could turn them on independently, and we'd drive around a while with the left one burning, and then we'd switch over to the right one, and then we'd burn them both for a while. <laughs> Some cop's going to pick you up if you don't watch out. That's what we've been worrying about. Well, don't try to get me to fix your ticket, and don't put it on the expense account. On the third evening, the officers followed the suspects to the bar on West 7th, Entered the dimly lit saloon. I see our friends down at the end of the bar there. Yeah, I see them. Let's pretend to be drunk and mosey down that way. Okay. Ah, you nuts. The country's better off today than it ever was. Look, Barney, you're all wrong. I ain't had a job in two years, and I know lots of guys that's worse off than I am. Hey, you're eating, ain't you? What's that got to do with it? Hey, watch where you're going. Uh, I beg your pardon. I wasn't... Say... Ain't your name Brown, Cecil Brown? Nope. I'm afraid you got the wrong man. Oh, that's funny. You look just like a guy I used to soldier with. His name was Brown. Sorry, old pal. My name ain't Brown. Oh, well, this is no offense. No offense. Let me buy you a drink, huh? Well, I... Uh... Oh, come on, come on. Now, what do you have? Huh? Scotch. Here, meet my friend. Edward's the name. We call him Ed for short. Hi, hey, Ed. Uh, my name's Wallace, Bernard Wallace. This is Ted O'Neill. Oh, yeah. What do you have? Bourbon. Swell. Hey, buddy, three scotches and one bourbon. Say, what's the big idea of leaving me standing on the street corner waiting for you? Ah, pipe down. You can't tell me to pipe down. I'll... Hey, who is this guy? Friend of mine. Don't like him. So what? I thought. Be here in a minute, the rat. You two been fighting again? I'm going to flatten that dame like a pancake someday. You and who else? You make a pass at me and I'll mess you up something awful. Yeah. What's the beef this time, babe? Ah, oh, this blonde beef truster insisted on wearing that coat tonight instead of leaving it with the rest of the stuff. Well, let her wear it. Yeah, you must be nutty. You so quiet, you dumb clown. Oh, just, uh, don't mind us. We're used to family rows, ain't we? <laughs> sure. I have a lot of them myself. Well, uh, <laughs> we got to scram. See you boys again sometime. Sure, so have another drink. No, yeah. thanks. We've had enough. Well, so long. <laughs> well, what's the ticket now? I'll let him get started, and we'll tail him as soon as they get underway. Did you get a good look at that coat the blonde was wearing? Yeah, and I'd stake a month's pay. It's one of the coats we're looking for. Well, they've had plenty of time to get started by now. Okay, let's get on the tail. <laughs> Parked in front of the hotel. Yeah, I see it. Better park here and we'll keep an eye on it. Step the time? Mm, just 10.30. I uh, hope we don't have to sit here all night. Oh, wait a minute. You see that Buick coupe over there? The one that guy's getting out of? Yeah, I saw that bird here last night. Where does he fit into this picture? I've got a hunch that it's somewhere in it, all right. Hey, look. There's that blonde coming out of the hotel. With an armful of clothes. Uh-huh, I thought so. She's loading the stuff in that Buick. Fence? Looks like it. Well, that guy looks like a Turk to me. He's helping the blonde load the car, all right. Mm, looks like they're ready to pull out. Let them pull. We'll be right behind them. Brown and Saxon are parked down the street. They'll keep an eye on for Ford. Did you tell them to search it tonight? Yeah. Yeah, they'll bring anything they find over to the office. Okay, go, go follow them. Friend runs a cleaning and pressing joint, eh? Looks that way. Well, gag to cover up his fence operation. Yeah. Hey, there's the Buick parked in the driveway. And there's the blonde dame helping him unload the stuff. Want to knock him over? No, uh -uh, not yet. We haven't anything on him to prove they stole the stuff. We've got to be sure we're after the right people. How are you going to find that out unless you pick him up? Well, let's get back and see if your boys found anything in that car. 
Back at headquarters, Thomas and Crumpler find that Crumpler's men have brought in a quantity of things found in the suspected car. They begin checking it with burglary reports in an effort to ascertain if the suspects are the ones they seek. One sealskin coat, two flashlights, and a hunting knife. It's a handy tool to have around if you want to jimmy a window. Yeah. This coat is what has me stumped, though. Not on any of the burglary reports? Not a one. How about the flashlight? Uh, not much of a chance of identifying them. Well, according to this report here, this uh, fellow in Glendale, he had a peculiar kind of battery in his flashlight. Let's see. I uh, saw that name somewhere in here. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, here it is. He said he had new Revere batteries in it. Let's take a look. Yeah. There you are, Tommy. Revere batteries are new ones. Well, that's the first definite thing we've had on those monkeys. Want to take them now? I don't see how we're going to pin a dozen robberies on this bunch on the strength of finding a certain kind of flashlight battery. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but keep watching them. Thomas speaking. This is Brown. A crumpler there? Yeah, just a minute. Brown, he wants to talk to you. Oh, thanks. Hello, Brown. Listen, Ed, I just followed our boyfriends down past the creamery on Santee Street. Looks like they're casing a job there. Uh, did they notice the car had been searched? Didn't seem to. Did they stop at the creamery? Nope, just drove around several times, circled the block, then came back. Uh-huh. Where are they now? Still at the hotel, as far as I know. Yeah, well, okay, keep them in sight, and if they start out again, let us know. All right, Ed. What's up? Brown thinks they're casing the Newtson Creamery for a job. Hmm. You said better have another talk with Inspector Stensland. morning, Thomas reported the new developments in the case to his superior officer, Inspector Stensman. If they try to knock over that creamery, there's going to be trouble. And how? That night watchman down there will shoot it out with them if they try to get in there. And we don't want any bloodshed in this case if we can prevent it. After all, our job is to prevent crimes as well as to solve them. Want me to pick them up? Yes. Yes, I guess you better bring them in tonight. We well, haven't much to hold them on. I know it, but we can hold them for a while on suspicion. Maybe we'll find enough evidence on them to warrant a charge, or, well, maybe one of them will talk. Unless I miss my guess, that brunette Dorothy's ready to talk now. Okay, pick him up. We'll see what we can get out of them. Seen anything down here at the creamery, Ed? No, not much. Brown and I saw the boys once. Saxon's got a good look at them, too. They're wary cusses. Seem to be when they're on a job. Looks like they were looking the place over. Yeah, both times they passed, they slowed down and took a good look at the whole layout. Mm, they never did show up at the hotel. I've been waiting since 8 o'clock. Mm, two hours, huh? Yep. What do you think of leaving Brown down here? You, Saxton, and I can go back to the hotel, and if they show up at either place, we can grab them. That's okay by me. Hey, Brown, I'm going back uptown with Thomas. Okay, I'll see you later. If that creamery job's actually set for tonight. Well, they're wasting an awful lot of gasoline cruising around if there isn't. Did you boys follow them when they went by? Yes, but they're too smart for us. They evidently weren't taking any chances of being followed. Drove through more alleys than I knew this town had. You know, it'd be a joke on us if those monkeys got suspicious after we searched that car and pulled up stakes on it. They may have moved to another hotel or apartment. That'd be just dandy. All our work to do over again. Yeah. You know, these birds are tough. Think we ought to get the other boys over here? Well, that's up to you, Tommy. Oh, nuts. We can take them. If you think they won't fill you full of slugs, you're crazy. Yeah, if they get a chance. The stories I've heard Barney tell have anything to them. They just as soon commit murder as look at you. If it meant a getaway, I've no doubt of it. Well, here's the hotel. See the car anywhere? Hmm. Nope. What if those monkeys have tumbled to us and pulled out? Uh, might as well park and wait a while longer. Silently, the officers waited. Deputy Thomas, his two companions, Crumpler and Saxon. Minute by minute, time ticked away. 11.20 and no sign of the suspects. 11.25, still only an occasional automobile slipped down the almost deserted street. 11.30, suddenly Crumpler grabbed Thomas' arm. There they are. I see them. They're by themselves. I wonder where the women are. At home, probably. 
Let's go. All right. Turn the corner by the creamery. Oh, no. Get your hands up, Healy. You too, Haynes. You're making a mistake, mister. My name's O'Neill. Yeah, Haynes will do right Come now. Come on, you heard him. Get him up. What is this, a heist? We're from Sheriff's office. We won't have a talk with you. Say, wait a minute. Let me get a look at you. Why, you lousy rat, so you're a copper, are you? That's right. So that's why you was buying us drinks. Why had I knocked your Take teeth it out? easy, take it easy, pal. We're taking you in. Get started. Go on. Ah, get in. Come on. Get in. Back at headquarters, Inspector Stensland detailed deputies Ray Morris, Peter Sutton, and Al Guasti to accompany Thomas and Crumpler back to the hotel to look for the two women. Ray, I think you and Sutton and Guasti had better take a look at Healy's apartment. You'll probably find a lot of stuff there. And that brunette may stagger in there pretty soon. Okay, Tommy. Ed, let's get up to Haynes' room and see what we can find. We'll see you boys at headquarters. Okay. Two o three was the number, wasn't it, Ed? Yeah, two o three. Let's take the stairs. Might save time. Mm. We don't want to tip off Haynes's pal. Hey, wait a minute. There's a light on in there. You got the key you got from Haynes? Sure. Let's use it. to her saw wood, will you? Shame to wake her up. Ah, let her sleep. Looks comfortable in that chair. Let's take a look around here. Yeah. Here's something wrapped up in a handkerchief. Let's see it. Boy, get a load of that. Jewelry. Scads of it. This is the right place, all right. Hey, take a look at this stuff in this closet, will you? Enough fur coats to start a store. Yeah, a live look at those clothes. Guess they haven't had time to deliver these to the Turk out on Vernon. Uh-oh. Here's something. What is it, Tommy? Nice little 38. Well, there's a map of some sort. Let's see it. Ed, look. Yeah. This is a map of the Nudes and Creamery offices. I guess we scared them off that job. Well, let's wake up our little playmate and take her back to the office. Yeah. Boy, she looks peaceful. I'll bet she is, too. Just like a buzzsaw. Come on. Get up. Wake up. Come on. Get up. Get up. Who are you? Never mind. Come on. We're taking you to jail. Go away. You bother me. Go, God. Come on, Ed. Give me a hand. Let me alone. Come on, you way. Come on. Well, boys, I see you got her awake. Say, what's the big idea? What's this all about? Know a fellow named Haynes? I don't remember. Oh, one of that kind, huh? What's your name? Marie Jones. Where do you live? You ought to know. You brought me here. Now, look. I'm going to tell you something. I don't want you to get sore at me or nothing, see? I'm not going to tell you a bunch of lies like that dame did. What dame? A Dorothy dame. You got her, didn't you? Yes, we got her. And she gave us a statement. Go oh. on. Oh, well, well, look, I'm just as surprised as you are seeing all that, that jewelry and stuff there on the desk. You see, that dame don't like well, never me. Never mind and... about her. We want to ask you some questions, and we want you to answer them. Yes or no, huh? Just like that. Well, look, I, I don't feel so good. I was drunk when you brought me in here. Drunker than a hoot owl. Now, during the time you've known Haynes, did he ever give you a fur coat? A fur coat? Hey, look here. Am I supposed to be charged with something here? What is this? I'm asking you a question. Did he give you a fur coat? Who? Haynes? Yes, Haynes. No. Did he ever give you any jewelry? Who? Haynes. No. Did you ever take any coats or clothing out to a cleaning place on Vernon? Oh, I took a few things out there. Some old things not worth bothering about. Dresses and stuff. I don't know. Rags. Such as ermine capes and silver foxes, eh? Sure. If you... Hey. No, absolutely not. It might interest you to know that our men have arrested the man who runs that cleaning shop. We saw you go out there with him, saw you unload a carload of clothing and fur coats. And we found all that stuff in there. And uh, this picture of you. Ever see that before? Oh, for the love of... Do you of... run around undraped like that very often? Hey, look. I don't know anything about that picture, see? I don't know anything about him at all. I was uh, in the store alone, drinking with somebody, and they wanted some pictures. <laughs> you tear that up, there ain't no negative. I didn't even know they'd been developed. I, I didn't know anything about the, the things. I... Ah, uh, nuts. We can't get anywhere with this woman. Bring the other girl in here, Thomas. Okay. 
Bring Dorothy in here, will you? Sit down, Dorothy. Where'd you get her? Friend of yours? Hey, Dame. <laughs> don't make me laugh. That pen of yours don't make me hysterical either, sister. Save it. We want to know something about your boyfriends, Dorothy. Yeah? What do you want to know? Recognize any of the stuff on that desk there? Sure. I've seen it all. Where? When the boys and this blonde dame here swiped them from the houses they broke into. Why, you crow-headed little rat, I'll tear your eyes oh, out. Oh, no, you won't. No, you won't. Sit down. <laughs> I said sit down. Dorothy, did Healy... Oh, he's your boyfriend, isn't he? Yes. Did Healy ever give you any clothes or jewelry? Gave me a ring once and a watch. This it? The one we found in the apartment? Uh-huh. Did he ever give you any money? Are you trying to be funny? No, he never gave me any money. I gave him all I had, though, to buy liquor with. Know anything about the cleaning place on Vernon where the stuff was stored? Sure. That Turk out there, he was buying the stuff from the boys. And this dame here used to haul the stuff out there. She was in love with a guy that owns that joint. Hmm, nice girl, isn't she? You like her type. Personally, I don't. Someday I'm going to fix you up, baby. How? I'm going to climb your frame for all it's worth. Listen, you corn-fed bottle of peroxide. You lay a finger on me and I'll bat you down so hard they'll think we're having another earthquake. Oh, yeah? Well, how do you like that? Oh, you asked for it, sister. Oh, why, you little rat. I'll bat you down. Ladies, ladies. I'll ladies, clean you. ladies. This isn't done in prison. <laughs> In just a moment, you will hear the conclusion of our story. intelligent and untiring efforts of the officers in this case, one of the cleverest burglary rings was broken up and $50,000 worth of property restored to the rightful owners. But what of the criminals, the two men and two women? They all received prison sentences, each according to his or her deserts. Now they are expiating their felonies. For men or women, crime does not pay. cars, tension all cars, cancellation broadcast 225, suspects now in custody. That is all. Gordon.